You can see that these two will generally be solved after this. We have to deal with this side and this side and this side. Now, the way to uh, proceed from here is the main thing that you have to remember is the parity switching algorithm that I'm going to detail in the notes and a little variation with that. We came across this on the 4x4x6. Uh, I'm sorry, the 4x4x5 uh, in the tutorial with that. And basically to switch these middles, you do that, um, that algorithm that goes uh, U, um, 2U, 2R, um, 2F, then it goes U, 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 U you, uh, you know, 2U, 2U, U, U, and 2U, then 2F, 2R, 2U. Um, but well, I'll, I'll show you the different variations. So what I want to do is set up a situation where there's some symmetry here that I can start moving these middles. One thing that stands out is these two and these two. Now this is going to be a lot of plugging and chugging because there's, there's a lot that's going to go into this and also this and this. But they're opposites. I have to make them face each other. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this around 180 degrees. The reason that I'm doing that is I want these two to match these two. Because then I'm going to hold it like this and solve it as a parity with these. So I'm going to do a parity switch that we've seen which will put these to here and these two here. So nothing new about this. It's just like this similar parity switch. It's going to do something to this side but I'm not going to worry about that. So we're going to go to U R F but I'm going to split the F down here. F and then 2U to U U to U U to U and then to F to R to you. So it did indeed put this over here and fix those. Um, so now I look what I have here. I've got these two and I've got these two. So to help with that I'm just going to move these two back. Coincidentally it solves these again and it puts these information here and I can go ahead and solve for the asymmetry here. Now when I do that, I'm going to move these two, switch these two, creating an orange side amidst the red and a red side amidst orange. So I'm actually going to move this back like here so that I can kind of fix that. Now look what I did here. I'm getting all set to do some little fancy footwork here. So I'm going to solve these two exactly the same way. Hold it to this side. My U is going to be split down here and let's we'll see what happens. So it's 2U, 2R, 2F, split down here, 2F, 2UU, 2U, then 2F, 2R, 2U. All right. Now what that did is it took the parity out of here but shifted it up here. Well, no worries. Do exactly the same thing but we split the F here. So. To you, to R, to F, U, 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 F, R, U. And rock and roll. This is fine, this is fine, this is fine, this is fine. But oh, we got this problem here. This ain't where it's supposed to be, this ain't where it's supposed to be, and they're opposites. So get them symmetric even if you have to turn this here so it's more plugging and chugging. So now I've got this set up here, this set up here, and I solve it the same way. I'm just going to do the parity switch here. Now understand, if I do the parity switch and there are two that I'm moving, then I split down the middle during my, you know, middle part of it, the U, U, and U. But if it's just one, then I only do the, the two U. The two U U. I don't go up here, just like we did with a with a six. And at the end of it, I'll have to I'll have to do an extra F. So let's see what happens. I honestly don't know myself, but this is how I do it, and this is what's worked. So again, two U, two R, and I'm splitting it here to F, and just one across. Well, one, two U, then two F, two R. 
to you. And then this gets changed. Now just like in the 4x4x6 when I do that, I, created, I create a parity generally on the opposite side. So I can search for where that parity was created and it was created here. It was right here. So we could fix that now or we could fix this. It really doesn't matter. I mean this would be easy to fix. This is a good symmetry. Now because this is 1 and not 2, it's the same algorithm as when it was 1 here, which means in the middle of it we don't do 2u, u, and 2u, we just do 2u. It'll solve it, but it'll create yet another parity, and that's what I mean by plugging and chugging. You just gotta keep, keep doing it. So let's try it solving this so it can make it look nice and symmetric. So we have, with this parity here, hold it like this, and actually, if you wanted, you could rotate it here so that, you know, you're putting it back in line. Um, I'm wondering if I should do that. Uh, well, I'm going to keep it like this just because this was the one I was supposed to go after next. So we'll see what happens. It's going to be turned at the end anyway. So to you, R, F. And just a 2u, u, not this one, and then to f, r, u. And normally what we would have to do is we'd have to turn this again. Um, but I don't think we even need to do that because this is already set up here. And now because we did that, we've created parity again up here. But this one is an easy one to solve. I, I think I actually am going to turn this because I'm going to want to be solving this independently. So, let's do it. To u, r, f, to u, u, and in this case, to u, because it was two of them, then f, r, u. Okay? So, there you have it. Now it's a matter of solving these two. I'm just curious if I go like that, what happens? Yeah, we don't want that. All right, so now we're going to solve these two, which is going to create another parity, and just keep plugging and chugging, flip-flopping these guys. So, to u, to r, to f, just one to u, then f, r, u, and then finish off with another to f. So that fixed that, and it did create a parity situation over here. That's okay. But why don't we, while we're here, just turn this over here? Because we fixed all this, and now we have just this to go. And we're almost done. So we need to, first off, we encounter this exact same situation at the end of the 4x4x6. And I'm just going to play exactly the same algorithm, which should solve the, the whole thing. So it's pretty much solved right now. But I'm going to be fixing the parity here by first flipping these two using the familiar parity. Then i got to flip this, and then it's going to create parity here, which is going to be 1, and then it's going to create it somewhere else. So I'll show you what I mean. So flip these two by the same mechanism to u to r, to f, to u, u, to u, to f, r, u. Oh, but we have this here and this here. So now we do the variation with just the one in the center, where we just do the to u, u, but not the u. So, so we do the u, r, f, and just to u, u, then f, r, u, and then of course we have to turn it as we do at the end of that algorithm, and oh, we got these two, but this is easy. We're old hands at this now. So, finish it off with to u, u um, r, f, to u, u, to u, to f, r, u, and you, my friends, have solved the infamous fully functional 2 by 3 by 4. And this is what it looks like. So that's the basic strategy. Keeping in mind, it's the variability of the shape that makes it so difficult. Um, because you have, on some cases, you have a even number on top, but an odd number here, you, you cannot shape, shape shift. You can't do 90 degree turns. But if you orient it to where you have, um, to where you have an odd number, 
well, two, three, four, five, yeah, five and three, following the laws of shape shifting and turning 90 degrees, this one can shape shift. And that's what makes it challenging is you have less degrees of freedom. You, some turns will give you 90 degree options and shape shifting options, and some turns um, will not. All right, hope that'll help. Again, this puzzle was bought by, was uh, made by Tom Z. It turns excellent. It's a fantastic addition to a collection, very challenging, highly recommended.